Hello, everyone. Welcome to Attorney Audits Agitators. Right now in this country, we are seeing levels of civil unrest that have not been seen for decades in the United States of America. And what do we need to add to this mix? You guessed it. You know it. Sovereign citizens. Today, I have a story about a student who was sent to prison in police officer dragging case. And you guessed it. She claimed sovereign citizenship. Thank you for tuning in. I'm Joe Palmetto. Joe, the lawyer. This is Attorney Audits Agitators. If you like my content, if you'd like to hear and read about sovereign citizens, if you believe that they are a curious species of individual and want to know what's going on behind the scenes, go ahead and buy my new book. The link is in the description below. You can get it for $9.99 on Kindle and a paperback is available for a few dollars more. The book is called Sovereign Citizens Deconstructing, Deflating, and Decoding the world's most notorious anti-government movement. Yes, I write all about sovereign citizens and I have all of our favorite hits in there. I think you will find the book fascinating. Check out the description below. Now let's dive into this article, which was written by Michael P. Relihan, and uh, it's in, uh, look, appears to be Westchester, which I, I'm not exactly, I think Westchester, PA? Yeah, Westchester, PA. An Immaculata University student who adopted beliefs popular among the Moorish American anti-court movement, that's interesting they call it an anti-court movement, was sent to Chester County Prison after a judge criticized her for putting a Malvern police officer's life in jeopardy during a routine traffic stop. Well, doing, doing making light of a tr routine traffic stop is, uh, is routine for sovereign citizens. Luckily, he didn't die, common police court judge Jacqueline Carroll Cody said of Officer Patrick Doherty, who was dragged several feet by the car Janae Rebecca Smith was driving the night he pulled her over for running several stop signs in the borough. But you didn't care what was going to happen to him. What you did that night almost killed somebody, Cody as said as Smith looked on from the courtroom podium. Cody sentenced Smith, who was commuting to Immaculata from her home in Philadelphia at the time of incident, to 9 to 23 months in the county prison. That's a fairly stiff sentence, though this was a dangerous crime. Plus four years of probation. She must do anger management, 25 hours of community service as part of her sentence. That's all good and well, but don't you think some mental health treatment should be called for in this situation? Oh, I forgot one thing. I forgot one thing. Geez, catching me off guard on a Sunday morning. You know it you know it it's the same time sip this is our ritual this is what we do to get prepared for the video everybody raise your glass your cup in the air cheers with me it tastes better when we sip together cheers okay Cody, who presided over Smith's trial in January, as well as a number of contentious court appearances at which Smith seemed to assert the court held no jurisdiction over her, a frequent contention of the Moorish American movement, noted that she could have sent Smith to state prison to serve a longer sentence. Her lack of a criminal record, however, spared her that fate. In January, following a three-day long trial, a jury found Smith guilty of one felony count of aggravated assault, fleeing or eluding police, recklessly endangering another person, and related charges. Aggravated assault is a high-level felony. Um, you know, some individuals who are convicted of aggravated assault as first-time offenders may not even get nine months in jail. Um, they might get house arrest, but this woman, no, sorry, she got jail. Smith, 29, who lives with her new husband in Las Vegas, represented herself in the trial. Good move, Sovereign. Although she had previously questioned the legitimacy of courts in Pennsylvania and has contended she is a Moorish American and she cannot be judged by her current legal authorities, during the trial she refrained from outbursts or sideshows and appeared polite and reserved. Good choice, ma'am. Smith contended during the trial she panicked during her encounter and had not meant to harm either Doherty or his colleague, Officer Tyler Burry. That excuse was disputed by the lead prosecutor in the case, District Attorney Michelle Frey, as well as Doherty, who wrote a victim impact statement for Cody in which he detailed the emotional impact the experience had had on him and his family. 
She had no respect for my life or my partner's life, Doherty wrote in the statement. It was read in court by Malvern Chief Louis Marcelli because the officer was unavailable. I was lucky to receive only bumps and bruises. I was one of the lucky ones. I still think about that night and how it could have ended differently. I think this is very important here. I, I'm going off on a little side tangent here, but, but police officers put themselves in danger every single day, and especially during traffic stops. They don't know what they're walking up to whenever they pull someone over for a taillight or for speeding. They don't know what they're getting into. And look here, these guys almost lost their lives or, 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 or suffered serious bodily injury over stop signs, stop sign violations. Frey reminded Cody that the video recorded of the traffic stop on King Street in the borough showed the two officers treating Smith professionally, not inflaming the situation or acting aggressively, in contrast to social media videos of hostile interactions between police and black motorists in recent months. Um, oh, well, there's been hostile interactions on, on video and social media be, be, between police and all kinds of motorists over the last several years. This is a reality of social media as social media and this thing, cell phones. Nobody yelled at her, Frey said, in asking Cody to sentence Smith to a long stay in county prison. They were polite. They were respectful. They treated her with nothing but kindness and respect. They went out of their way to be kind to her. Nevertheless, Smith decided to run from the scene in her car while Doherty was trying to get her to step outside for identification. Officer Doherty didn't know if he was going to go home that night when she took off. I can't stress this enough. If officers give you commands to get out of the vehicle, just get out. The alternative is far worse for you and for the officer, okay? They can give you lawful commands. You don't have to consent to a search of yourself or your vehicle. And I recommend that you don't do that. Do not consent. But if they tell you to get out of the vehicle, get out of the vehicle. You can sue them later. You preserve your rights. You can fight it in court. The funny thing is most people do something like this, and the sovereign citizens aside, um, they had pending charges or they had a warrant out or they knew they were going to go back to jail. This woman, I don't know what her reason was. Well, here it is. For her part, Smith continued to insist she had felt trapped in a box during the encounter and that her decision to flee was misinterpreted as an attempt to harm the officers. We were both out of line, she said. You put out what you want to receive. Well, the truth is when an officer pulls you over, you are going to feel isolated and trapped to a certain degree because you're not free to just leave whenever you want. And that's a necessary condition of the enforcement of law in this country and every country. And so I can under, I actually understand the feeling of being trapped. Some people are claustrophobic. We don't want our freedoms to be restricted in any way, but you got to exercise caution and self-control when dealing with the police police. And usually in a transaction like that, it'll be over in under an hour, sometimes under 20 minutes. I didn't want things to escalate this like this. This will never happen again, ever. According to testimony at trial, Smith was pulled over around 910 while driving a black Chevrolet Monte Carlo, which Burry had seen fail to stop at several stop signs along the King Street corridor running eastbound into the borough. This was December 20th, 2018. This is a couple years old, this case. The car kept going even after Burry activated his lights and siren and eventually pulled into the Malvern Shopping Center in the middle of town. When Burry asked Smith for her license and registration, she first hesitated and began questioning him about the stop. What had she done wrong? What authority did he have to stop her? They, see, this is where this is where one of the reasons she did what she did comes out. Okay, all the all are the sort of questions that persons who identify with the Moorish American or sovereign citizen movements pose because they question whether police have the right to stop them for such things as traffic infractions without a warrant. At some point, Doherty arrived, first as backup at the scene and later, as Smith's refusal to comply with providing identification became more pronounced, side by side with Burry at the passenger door. Smith eventually produced two ID cards. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't read this before, friends, uh, which proved to be self-produced Aboriginal American Native ID cards that many in the Moorish movement use. Her Pennsylvania driver's license was under suspension at the time. You see, even if your license is suspended, ma'am, 
don't flee the scene. You're just going to make things worse. You would have went home that night, okay? They might have taken, you know, you might have had to get your car towed, but they weren't going to put you in jail for that. Burry and Doherty said they were not able to match the name on the cards with any valid driver's license and told Smith, Janae Rebecca Bay was the name on the card. Told Smith she would be taken into custody as they could ascertain her name and address. When she refused to get out of the car, they began trying to pull her from the driver's seat and she fought back. With Burry to the rear and Doherty closest to the door, excuse me, and holding onto her arm, Smith put the car in gear and hit the accelerator. Burry testified he saw Doherty drag between 10 and 20 feet before falling to the ground and rolling over. Doherty was only moderately injured and missed two days at work as he underwent therapy. I definitely needed to go to the hospital that night, he told Frey in his testimony in January, but I would have rather caught the person who did this. Asked his reaction to what happened to him, Boerty answered, I felt like I'd been hit by a bus. Boy, I bet you did. That probably was a crazy experience. Now, this woman was convicted of aggravated assault, and aggravated assault in Pennsylvania doesn't require that you do serious bodily injury to the individual. What it does require is that you attempted to do it, and that attempt can be interpreted as reckless behavior. So you didn't even have to intend the officer, and you didn't, and I'm sorry, you didn't even, you don't even have to have intended to injure the officer in order to be convicted of aggravated assault. You could have just been reckless in your actions. If you took reckless or negligent actions, and recklessness and negligence don't require a specific intent. If you were negligent or reckless in your actions and it put an officer in fear of serious bodily injury, you can be convicted of aggravated assault, a serious felony in Pennsylvania. And that's what happened to this Moorish sovereign citizen. She's going to do a minimum nine month jail sentence, um, which isn't going to be fun. Hopefully, I, I think there should be some mental health treatment. I mean, anger management. I don't know if that's the right way to go here. Um, some serious mental health treatment. Um, you know, with everything that's going on in the country, this movement probably is only growing stronger, okay? Probably growing stronger because the current movement in the country is very, uh, there's a large anti-police, anti-government sentiment from uh, large portions of the mainstream population. And so these sovereign citizens are probably feeding off that because they've had this attitude for a very long time time. Thank you for tuning in to Attorney Audits Agitators. I'm Joe Palmetto, Joe the Lawyer. If you like my content, buy my book. Check the description below. Sovereign Citizens Deconstructing, Decoding, and Deflating the World's Most Notorious Anti-Government Movement. You will love it. There's some fun illustrations in there. It's uh, under 100 pages. It's a fun read, but totally worth it. Thank you for tuning in to my show.